Hi everyone! In this Mission to Mars video, we're going to be talking about the next step in developing your mission to Mars, and that's planning your mission. Joining us today to help us understand how and why we do this is Elizabeth Cordova, a payload systems engineer on the Mars 2020 mission. Welcome, and thanks for talking with us today. My pleasure. Let's start with a question some students may already have. What does a payload systems engineer do? So most missions have a payload systems engineer that's responsible for looking at all of the different engineering aspects of each instrument and making sure that once they get integrated into the spacecraft that they function and that they fit and that you can communicate and power them. What are some important things to think about when planning a mission to Mars? Everything. There's so many, so many things that we have to think about. First is Mars and what the environment is like on Mars. The radiation is more extreme. The dust is very fine and gets into our wheels and our motors and our science instruments. Sunlight that we receive on Mars is less, and so therefore we have less energy from the sun. Mars is also not right next door to the Earth. It still takes time for signals to get to Mars and back. All of those factors play into how we have to design a mission because we have to meet the environment that we're going to be in on Mars. What sorts of limitations or constraints do engineers work with when planning a mission? We have a lot of different engineering and cost and schedule constraints. We are dealing with a very strict launch date and a very strict schedule. We're also dealing with cost. NASA gives us a budget to do these missions and we have to make sure that we are good stewards of that money and we fit within the cost of the mission that's been assigned. And then everything else is an engineering aspect. We went through a phase early in the design cycle where we were trying to place the instruments on the rover. And we had to look at all of the engineering constraints to do that. One example was the wind sensor that was part of META, which is an environmental suite of instruments. And we had to look at thermal, mechanical, data, electrical, um, and environmental constraints of where to place this wind sensor. After months of design and discussion, we found out that if we placed the sensor on an arm that at first was tucked into the rover, close to the rover, but then sprung open after landing, we were able to measure the Martian wind properly. I know you work on rovers, but do you have some insight into how the rockets are selected to launch a mission? Yes, some of the most important things when we select a rocket are to ensure that it has enough fuel or energy or thrust to get us to where we wanna go. In this case, Mars, we also have to make sure that it's roomy enough inside what we call the payload fairing which is where our spacecraft lives on the top of a rocket. And then we also have to make sure that it's available in the schedule that we need. When we were designing Mars 2020, we knew we were going to launch in the year 2020. So we had to select a launch vehicle that was ready and waiting for us to integrate with it in 2020. Was there anything else you'd like students to know about when it comes to planning a mission? Yes. One of the most important things about planning a mission is inclusion of different ideas. And we design really interesting missions, really interesting spacecraft because we listen and we incorporate and value uh, different ideas, different backgrounds and different opinions. And we wouldn't be where we are today landing the most complicated mission on Mars ever if we didn't involve a whole bunch of different people and listen to them and include their ideas. Thank you so much for joining us today, Elizabeth. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about planning a mission to Mars, the next step in developing a mission to Mars. You're very welcome. Have fun with the videos and can't wait to see everybody talking about the mission. Now that we've heard why this step is important, you're ready to start planning your mission. Stay tuned for the next step in developing a mission to Mars designing your mission.